Let's take a look at computing a cyclic redundancy check, CRC, via a hardware shift register approach. The idea is to compute polynomial division and use the remainder as a check value. The CRC result is the data word appended with some zeros mod the CRC polynomial. For this example, we use a data word of binary 101 and we'll append a 5-bit zero check value. That gives us the polynomial equivalent of x to the seventh plus x to the fifth. We use a 5-bit CRC polynomial of x to the fifth plus x squared plus one. Rather than using long division, this approach uses a hardware configuration that we'll spend a little time explaining the operation of. The feedback polynomial, which is the divisor for the division, is represented by the F boxes here, F5 through F0. Generically, the idea is that a feedback polynomial is F5 times x to the fifth plus F4 times x to the fourth, and so on down to F0 times x to the zero. This way, any feedback polynomial can be specified. However, the useful ones all have a one in the top bit because otherwise the hardware won't actually do anything really useful. Now, how does this hardware work? Well, the idea is that it's a shift register where every one of the rectangles C0 through C4 contains one bit of information and the XOR symbols are gates that take two inputs and produce an output. So in this case, the input to C0 is the top bit through F0, XORed with the top bit of the code word. So what we have is the code word top bit, XORed with F0 times C4. In Boolean algebra, multiplication is an AND function. So what this is really saying is F0 is one, then the value of C4 puts, gets put into the XOR gate, and if the value of F0 is zero, then nothing happens, and it's just the code word top bit that gets propagated. At the next bit, we have C0 goes to C1, but it's XORed with the top bit if F1 is one and nothing happens, it's just a shift operation if F1 is zero. The same thing happens with C1 going to C2, and it gets XORed with whatever the top bit is only if F2 is one, and so on, and so on. In hardware, there's a thing called a clock pulse, which takes all the inputs and puts them into the register simultaneously. The way this circuit works is that all the outputs from C0 through C4 plus the top bit of the code word show up and go through the XOR gates. The output of the XOR is waiting at each one of the C bit inputs, and the clock pulse takes the inputs and puts them inside the register. And then the next clock pulse does the same thing over and over. So let's work an example. We'll remind you of some XOR facts. XOR of zero and zero gives you zero. Zero XOR one or one XOR zero gives you one. But the interesting part is that one XOR one gives you a zero. So this gives you a one if one of the inputs is one and gives you a zero if both of the inputs are the same. As it turns out, that's exactly equivalent to one bit addition if you ignore the carryouts. We're going to use a feedback polynomial of x to the fifth plus x squared plus one. That maps down into these coefficients inside the f bits. And we note that because a zero f bit didn't do anything, we can basically remove the XOR gates and redraw the hardware pattern this way, where it's really just a feedback shift register. It's a shift register, and every once in a while there's an XOR gate that takes the top bit and cycles back in. The pattern of these XORs and where they're placed corresponds to the CRC polynomial and gives different mixing patterns, some better than others for fault detection. Now let's run an example and see how this thing works in practice. We're going to initialize the shift register with a seed value of zero. It doesn't have to be zero, it could be some other seed value, but for this example, we're gonna say that the seed value is zero. Now we show our three-bit data word, and to compute the check value, you have an initial check value that's all zeros and run it through this hardware system. We're gonna save the three bits of the data word aside for the resulting code word, and we'll see those come back later. Now let's take a look at the top bit in the code word. It's a one, and that goes into the bottom XOR gate. We also have a zero in the top of the feedback shift register, and so that goes in the bottom XOR gate. And what we have is zero XOR one giving a one. The one is 
waiting for C0. It doesn't go into C0 right away. It waits for a clock pulse to put all the inputs into the registers. So the one is just staged there waiting. What about C1? Well, it has a direct connection to C0, so there's a 0 waiting at C1. C2 has C1, which is a 0, and C4, which is a 0, XOR together, and that gives a 0. C3 just has the input of C2. C4 has the input of C3. Now that we've computed what the value of all the connections are, what we can do is exercise the clock pulse to shift everything in. So the idea is that at the end of the clock pulse, all those inputs go inside the registers. And by the way, while we're at it, we've consumed the top bit of the code word, so we shift that left one bit as well. Now we can do this again. We compute all the values. We do a shift operation, and all the computed values go into the register, consuming one bit in the code word. And we keep doing this. And notice that C4 is 0. So what's happening is we're going to do five cycles. And in the end, what we will have done is shifted the first five bits from the code word into the shift register. So when you're done, what you'll see is C4 has the initial top bit of the code word, C3 has the second bit of the code word, and down through C0 having the fifth bit of the code word, and there's three code word bits left to go. The fact that this is three is not a coincidence. In this computation, it will always be the case that the number of dummy zeros in the check value is the number of cycles it takes for the first code word bit to make its way to the top shift register bit. Now, in this case, things are interesting because our first data word bit happened to be a 1. It might have been a 0, but in this case, it happened to be a 1. And because it's a 1, what we'll see is the feedback shift register is finally doing some feedback, and there are 1s to two of the XOR gates. Now, when we do the computation, things get interesting because the input to C0 is the top bit of the code word 0, but XORed with the top bit C4, so that is 1 XOR 0 giving a 1. The input to C2 is also a 1 XOR 0 giving a 1. So what we'll have is a 1 bit going into C3, a 1 bit going into C2, and a 1 bit going into C0. Now we cycle the clock, we see that happening. So our shift register is now 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. We do this another time. This time, C4 is 0, so all that really happens is the bit shift left 1. And now again, C4 has a 1 bit in it, so the feedback goes into operation. And we compute the results and get a value. At this point, we've processed all the code word bits. There's nothing left to process, so we have our answer. Let's bring back the data word that we've remembered. And now we know what the check value is, because the check value is exactly the values that are remaining in the shift register. And with that, we're done. We've computed a CRC process using a left shift hardware implementation.